again, just for anybody viewing this, anybody watching this, I don't believe in the Jewish term. I don't use the term Jewish. I try not to at least, uh, or Jew. I do think it has a lot to do with replacing the true people of Israel and covering them up by another group of people. But outside of that, just take in mind the truths that are being said here. All right, that's my disclaimer. Exclusive Gentiles only religion. And such a thing can happen only because rank and file believers tend to prefer men's doctrines, no matter how misguided, to the Word of God. So called replacement theology has done extensive damage to the divinely intended connection between Hebrews and Gentile believers. And it's also led to several attempts by humans bearing the symbol of the cross to exterminate the Jewish people off the face of the earth. Their belief is that since, since God must be done with them, we should finish the job. Let's just get rid of them all together. I mean, how can we read the wonderful and inspired book of Ruth? and so easily adopt that part of the theology of Ruth that deals with her relationship with Boaz as her kinsman redeemer and accept it as a type and shadow of the church and of our Jewish Savior only to turn around and disavow the equally powerful part of the theology of Ruth that shows that converted Gentiles ought to cleave to the Jewish people. It's a study of religious hypocrisy and syncretism, and we need to correct it. Ruth was gleaning in Boaz's field when her four. Go ahead, Milo. I see your hand. Sorry. I just want to reiterate. I think no. That's, I think that's a really, really good point that he just made, and that needs to kind of be shouted to the rooftops even more. Is you know whenever I've heard of the Book of Ruth. It, the focal point has always been um, Boaz being the king's and redeemer, and that that is a beautiful depiction of Messiah, which it is. I completely agree, and we'll, we'll get into that. But never did I, um, in my previous years, look at it or was taught that it is Gentiles being grafted into Israel. That wasn't a staple. That wasn't a focal point. It wasn't... Um, mentioned you know it was always it's the kingsman redeemer and and this relationship um and and typology or whatever you call that word of uh, like yep. you know typology, the word i'm trying to look for type it's, shadow yeah. yep mm -hmm. yeah type or shadow of, of messiah but to also bring to the forefront because literally in the first i mean ruth is such a short book the first half of the book <laughs> literally before it even gets into the kingsman redeemer um is about a Gentile being grafted into Israel. And when we look at Ruth, it, it, it really, really depicts, and again, we got to hone in that she was a Moabite. And I know that there's people that believe that she wasn't. And I only heard that from camps who tried to exclude um, other nations, if you will, versus I would say just they're just plain racist because they want to make everybody in scripture that's saved an Israelite. Um, Versus actually looking at Ruth and saying, nope, she's named a Moabitess for a reason. She is a Mo she is a Moabitess. She is from that country. She was a Gentile. She continued to be a Gentile by and DNA. They serve different gods. They serve, they different, serve gods, different gods, right? Because Naomi's response in saying, go back to your people, go back to your gods, is not. Yeah, she's her not just saying, I want to return. Up. She's not saying I want to return to who I'm originally was in Israel. Like there's no there's no language showing that she's a dispersed Israelite or Israelite that mm -hmm. has been, uh, 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 you know, gone into captivity. And she's not coming, coming back. back to her roots. She's not yeah. coming back to her roots. She's trying to get some new roots. Yep. <laughs> I'm trying yeah. to be grafted and into so a tree that has a different root system. Exactly. So, and so she takes hold there on. There is a difference. 
a huge difference because now she has left her former God or, or in that, that allegiance, if you will, and to her own people and is showing us what he's pointing to, this teacher is pointing to us, is this is the example that Gentiles, if you profess to be a Gentile, is supposed to take on when you cling to the God of Israel. It's cling to the God of Israel first and foremost, and you become a part of his people. Do you lose your DNA? No, and I, I don't know if it's this video he gets into another one, or, or I think he asked the question, what is Ruth? We'll get into that. a little bit on but, it in the previous one. Okay. Um, but again, I just want to hone in on that. That is an example. And it's been that uh that truth and 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 that part of Ruth um has been divorced from it. And so we can't have one without the other. They they go together. And I would love if at some point, um, just to share, because maybe all of us have seen it, but I don't know if others have seen it, is watching a video, a short clip on the grafting end, because I think that's really, really amazing um from a just different ministry actually, or for me no 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 no. i mean just just a farmer's oh yeah showing yeah. how to graft in and what that looks yeah, like yeah. the cutting off of one piece and the, the grafting in a new one and shaving like that's just it's really beautiful because it shows how we're supposed to um to be but that was all very good i appreciate that milo um another thing for those who are new those who are part of my ministry hear me talk about this all the time so it's probably repetitive for a lot of people here but for those who are new to the walk i encourage you to study the topic replacement theology and to see how bad it is um obviously you want to you can do both things you can study it from the christian side that believes in replacement theology look at it from their view totally fine with that so you can get get in their brain get in their mind how they think but then also read a critique preferably from a messianic teacher or somebody similar to our belief, um, you will get a critique from Christians who believe in covenant theology. So if you want to do, if you want to see a Christian's critique of another Christian's theology, look at covenant theology versus replacement theology. You're going to get a little closer to the truth. But if you go to a messianic Israelite kind of Hebraic believer like us, you're going to get a better, holistic, more accurate view of both of those theologies. Because covenant theology is good, but it still needs some exhortation. still needs a little correction. But it's better. Covenant theology is better than replacement theology. Because at least in covenant theology, they're not replacing Israel. They believe Israelites are still Israelites by DNA. Nothing has changed. Versus in replacement theology, they're saying, oh, we are now Christians are now Israel. We are the real Israel, and we replace them. So God's not dealing with them anymore. He stopped the covenant. He stopped with them. He started with them, and he started now the covenant with us. That's replacement theology versus covenant theology is no. The, the covenant continues. They're still his people, but in covenant theology, they still believe we don't have to keep the law. You know, we don't have to obey the law of Moses under Jesus Christ, we've been liberated, and they still believe there's going to be a rapture, and the Jews, the Israelites, are going to be left behind, and they'll have a chance to be saved, and then God's going to continue his covenant while they've been raptured up into heaven. Like, that's all bad. But if you listen to a Messianic Hebrew Israelite kind of teacher talk about covenant theology and replacement theology, you'll get, obviously, the more correct, accurate uh, belief. So that's a study I think you 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 all should do on the side. And the reason why you should do that is so that you can have effectiveness in knowing where this belief comes comes from when you talk with Christians, because uh, there's a lot of Christians that don't even know about those two theologies. They just they just believe what they're being taught in their churches, but some of them are not given history, historical foundation for where their beliefs comes from. So you might be helpful in helping them connect the dots. All right, let's continue. 